that makes sense. Um, I've just finished a cooking class online. Thank you to those of you who came along. Um, we had a we had a fun time, and I made some orange some orange puddings. Um, so it, it, it was it was great, and I'll post a picture up later. What I wanted to share with you a lot, a lot of people um, are, are getting a TM6. Um, they're coming to your homes, and you're getting the opportunity to unpack them. Really encourage you all to, when that does, when you do get your machine, yes, unpack it, yes, plug it in, yes, turn it on. Then can you give me a call so that I can walk you through the do's and don'ts of using your Thermomix. Um, and I know that um, I, I just send you an email out with a link to the video of safety briefing. If nothing else, if you could just watch that, that would be fantastic. So what I wanted to share with you today is I'm just going to pop a video in, um, you know, a little bit of do's and don'ts with your Thermomix in here and um, some great tips on how to use it. So who, who have I got on? It's hard to see um, who's who's on watching just to say hello. But... Um, it's hard because I'm on my computer. I don't really, I don't really see um, who's on. But anyway, let's get started. So you got your TM6. You've unpacked it. You've turned it on. Turn it on by pushing the button here. Wakey wakey, it comes up. You plug in. You log into your Cookadoo account, which you need to create on your phone or your iPad or your computer. When you do create that Cookadoo account, um, please make sure you do it on the website, not on the app. Sometimes what we find is when you log on through the app, it takes you to um, Canada or another country and we really don't want you logging in to their country. We want you logging into Australia. So that's best done um, via the actual website. Once you've done that, you've created an account, then you can log on through your app afterwards. So in terms of once you've got your Thermomix on, um, it goes you through all the safety prompts. Read through those, the do's and don'ts. And then you've got me to help you. So I would be doing one live in my kitchen, just like this, like I'm doing right now, or I can pop in if you're local and everyone's healthy and safe. So um, number one rule, never um, drag your Thermomix. Always lift it, um, never drag it along the bench because you have scales in the feet and that affects um, that affects that Thermomix, um, the wiring inside it. Take it out, straight up and off. And to pull it apart, this has just been cleaned because uh, I've just made um, those puddings. Take the lid out. Now, to get your measuring cup out, um, it, it is stuck in there quite snugly. So you can pull it out straight up after a while. But what might be better is if, you, if you're finding that a bit tricky to um, get out, you can just pivot it. So on the side, lifting up on the side and pulling it up that way. It comes out a lot easier that way. So lid out. And then you've got your beautiful bowl. So you've got two shapes. Your handle comes this side and down here. I find for me, when I am using my bowl to pour anything, I hold on to the lower part of the handle. It keeps the, my um, ergonomic design, I suppose. It keeps my um, a lot less pressure on my body. So I pour with the lower handle like that. And I think I'm back the front. Um, we're just going to keep going because I don't know how to fix it on my computer to change it. So if you hold it up here, you should can see so there's a bit more weight, a bit more weight on my body. When I'm pouring, up to you, just a little tip, hold on to the lower part of the handle, a lot easier when you're pouring. Um, to get that base off, you have a bit like a smiley face in there, there's the mouth, there's a couple of eyes. Um, Big eyebrow, <laughs> I don't know, what, whatever you We've got finger grips. So this little section here is your finger grip. And I put my four fingers in there. And then I rest the bowl on the palm of my hand like this. Okay. And then you want to, sorry, I'm, I'm just manoeuvring for the camera. <laughs> you want to release it. So what we're doing to do that is we're turning it clockwise. Um, yes, so round to the, sorry. That side, release and take it out. I'll do that again. So finger grips in there, um, palm on the black base, release, take it out. And you notice I don't tip the bowl upside down. If you do tip the bowl upside down to get your um, blade out, make sure you're holding onto the blade with your hand 
because when you release that open, that blade is going to come out and watch your little toes. So all comes apart, all goes into the dishwasher for a nice um, clean. And to put it back together, face on in an unlocked position, you can see that's slightly ajar. So if we're looking at a clock, that would be about pointing to 7 o'clock. Face in, a blade in, I mean, all the way down the bottom, so make sure it's sitting right down the bottom. And then lock your base back on. Really important that you line up the base with the handle. So I don't know if you can see that slightly off. We want it to be completely on. You are training it like an animal um, to go into the position properly. If once you've trained it in and out, every time you release and um, close, it will go in and out of position beautifully. Another safety feature, all this can go in the dishwasher, yes. Make sure that when you put it back onto your machine that the pins are dry before it goes back on. So it can all get submerged in the water. Just make sure it's dry before it goes back on. Okay, um, other things in here, you've got your inside here, you can um, clean that out. And at the bottom of your machine, there's a hole. There's a hole in here too. And so if you want to wipe anything out, it'll just go onto the bench top. Pick it up and clean it off as well. Cleaning your arms. Um, you can run a, a cloth through there. Don't need to touch these at all. They will do their own thing. This thing here, this little trigger up here, this is your lid trigger. So if you're ever having a problem, we've never seen um, a problem with this before. But this triggers the, to the machine that the machine has its lid on and we're good to start. So that's your lid trigger there. Um, now, um, green lights mean it's cold um, and it's good to touch. Red lights come on when it's 60 degrees or more, it means it's hot, don't touch. Then you've got um, your machine as well. Before we get into that, I'll actually show you the butterfly. So on your inside here, you've got your blade. I'll just realize that and show you. So your blade has got um, the one that, the higher blade and the lower sitting blade. So we want the butterfly to be going behind the higher blade. Like that, okay? So it sits behind the higher blade. And what's happening is those little extra bits here, they grip onto the lower blade, like so. So if you did that um, the other way, it has nothing to grip onto and it'll come off. So the best way is behind the higher blade or you might look at it and think that's the straight side. So behind the, the straight side of the blade, sorry. Um, if that's sitting in there and pointing to 12 o'clock, for instance, I've got that clock, point that to 12 o'clock, then the butterfly goes into 11. And I know I'm, for me, I'm back the front. I don't know what I look like for you. Um, so just like that. You want to take a screenshot? Now's a good time. <laughs> if you get stuck, if you can't remember, give me a buzz. I'm always available. Butterfly, think four wings, maximum of speed four. Okay, now we've got a basket that goes in there as well. I'll just get that out of my drawer. So the basket fits in. You've got your groove here and it fits in there. So you've got your pouring spout on this side like that. Now, when you've steamed um, rice or um, potatoes or whatever it is that you're doing, it's pretty hot. So Fermimix have designed the spatula to have this little hook in the handle and that clips into the hole, there's a little hole in there in the basket and we clip that in, give it a grab and that creates a handle to lift it out and um, tip it out, whatever you're going to do there. Sometimes the um, recipe will ask you to replace the measuring cup with the TM basket. So that's this. It goes on top like that. You can use your splash guard as well. Depending on the recipe, maybe there's your splash guard. It's a lot easier to clean than the basket. Depending on your this has got a lot more breathing holes underneath than this. But you could use either one. 
if you wanted to like that. All right, so talking about the splash guide, the recipe will tell you place the splash guard on top. You just need to do that. And when you turn it on, the, hand, the arms will lock it into place for you. You don't need to touch the arms. Um, sometimes I've had this on, uh, if I was doing jam or something like that, and I wanted to stop even more splatter. That's why I love this, because it, this is the splatter stock here. Um, I've just sat that on when it's already going. It's not locked in or anything, so you could do that too. Um, what else? We've got our Varoma. So my Varoma has just made the puddings, as I've said, here. And it's got a little groove underneath, and that just sits on top of the lid like that so you don't have anything else on there when the Varoma is on. You can have it just with the basket or you get the Varoma tray as well and the Varoma tray sits in the top and you might have things like um, an omelette in the top, um, vegetables, meat in the bottom and you might even have your basket inside the thermos bowl and you might have other um, carbs or rice or quinoa or whatever it is that you're cooking for a layered dish, vegetables, potatoes, leeks, things like that in the basket. So you've got that layered cooking happening. And that's another demo on its own. So, did anyone watch my Varoma demo, by the way? Um, the, the lid for the Varoma is a really great drip tray. So when that, when you finish steaming and you're taking this off you want to have the lid turn it away from you bring it down that's my dog <laughs> and then um, get your aroma up and use it like a drip tray like that so it catches all the drips underneath now tips on the aroma if you're steaming anything you want to put um, the minimum amount of water is 250 grams of water and that'll give you 20 minutes of steaming. However, I like to put 500 grams in sometimes because I normally have my Varoma packed out. So if you have it packed out like me, you'll need more water because you need more pressure to create more steam. Um, I did think of something else and I can't remember what that, what that was. So um, I've forgotten. <laughs> uh, I've forgotten. Oh, it's gone. Sorry, live TV. Forgot. Brain moment. Um, when you are using your oh, that's what I was going to show you. I remembered when you're using your aroma, you don't have to measure the water using the scale. You can just you can just use your markings. So on the outside of your bowl, you have mm, trying to get the light. Um, 500 gram mark, one liter, and so forth, up to 2.2 liters up there. And you've also got those markings inside the bowl as well. So I just use them to fill up the water when I'm steaming anything. And I always put in roughly 500 grams of water, put my um, Varoma on with my vegetables and then steam it on speed two Varoma for about 20 minutes. If you want to do, uh, um, if you have got, say, a chicken in your Varoma or something that's, going to, you know, you want to create more um, steam, you can turn your um, speed up to speed three on the machine. So looking at the machine is another um, session really because I don't think I can be close enough with my computer. But just to let you know when you've, when you've got your machine on, you've logged into Cookadoo, um, you just basically search anything on here that you want. You've also got your menu on here, so the screen's a bit bright. It's not really working out very well there. Um, sorry, I can't make that closer for you. So click on here and you've got your um, recipes and things like that. I might do that as another session and I'll come back with my phone and that way we can see a bit closer. So I will share some of um, my puddings later. But just if you haven't got your Thermomix and you're looking at purchasing one this month, you get this beautiful um, oval thermo server as a gift with purchase. It'll come as a separate order to your machine and it'll be posted out to you. And it's currently got my orange puddings, which I'm about to put some more in as well. 
and you not only get that, you get your um, Verom, uh, your festive flavour cookbook as well as your basic cookbook as well. So I will come back after and I will show you how to use the screen on the Thermomix.